at Journal, uh, at Journal Club. This is a space for any and all researchers, research students, university students, postgraduate and undergraduate professors. And this is a space where we learn and grow together. <laughs> So I'm going to spend uh, a little bit now about our presenter. Uh, Dr. Uh, Job Lazarus of Kelo. He is a master's student uh, in engineering and systems management uh, and University of Science and Technology. <laughs> in he also holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Makerere University in Uganda. This is really interesting. So far, two meetings, two countries are mentioned in just a few sentences. So the question today is, how may one rise from a villager to becoming a global figure? And today you are joining the interactive session of this young man who is making big waves the contribution in the world through researching on microchips. Some of you might be wondering what microchips are. Don't worry if you are <clears> not expert <throat> in uh, engineering. Um, he'll break it down for us, the kind of work he's doing through research. The session today will be able to as a researcher to utilize the innovativeness and entrepreneurship skills of research for career mobility. As you know, research is a profession and research creates a lot of opportunities such as today for meeting. So our topic today is research for career mobility. And I'd now like to hand over the session to Job Lazarus for Kelo, and I will make you co-host so you can also uh, share your slides. So thank you so much and welcome Job Lazarus. Thanks a lot, Joyce. First, I want to be sure that you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. We see your video is off. Do you want to start your video or you want to keep it off? <laughs> I'll keep it on for a few seconds. Okay, um, I welcome everybody to this wonderful session. It is going to be very interesting and uh, you will never be the same after this. So let me begin my, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Kindly, everyone, if you're not talking, kindly mute your audio. Yes, we can see your screen now. Please proceed. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I welcome everybody to this wonderful session once again. Uh, it is going to be so interesting. We will learn a lot about research, especially how you can rise from wherever you are and become a global figure. So I want to begin with a question. What is everyone in the world looking for? That teacher, you know, the doctors, the engineers, the students, what, what is everybody looking for? And the answer is just one word, solutions. Solutions to what? Everyone is looking for solutions to their problems. No matter where you are, no matter where you are, everybody is looking for solutions to their problems. And uh, the, world, the world actually has a lot of money a lot of money. No man has ever left the planet. We have a lot of money, but money is spent on solutions, not problems. So that means 
as long as you can provide solutions to problems, you're gonna make a lot of money. So I'm gonna show you how uh, you can you can become that global figure by solving problems. Now, uh, it is very interesting to note that money money goes to those who provide solutions to problems. The more solutions you provide, the more money you make. So that means if there is no solution you can provide to any problem in the world, then you cannot make money because money goes to those who provide solutions. And it is in the, in the problems you solve that you find your relevance to humanity. So your relevance to humanity depends on the problems you solve. The more problems you solve, the more relevant you are to humanity. Now ask yourself, what, what problems are you solving? What, what, what issues are you trying to resolve? Because in the issues you resolve lies your relevance to humanity. Now here's a big question. What, what can you offer? What is within you that you can offer to, to the world? Because the world is looking for that which you can offer, which can solve their problems. And problems are actually everywhere even though not everybody sees them and provides solutions to them. Now, when you, when you start providing solutions, you, dis, you distinguish yourself and you become so unique. So your uniqueness lies in the problems you solve. And it is very important for us to, to, to note that everyone, everyone has the ability to solve problems and we were all created to solve problems. So that if you haven't found your problems, then you have to look for them because they exist. You are not created to just pass time. You are created to solve problems in the world and serve humanity in your lifetime. Now, here's a very interesting word. Probably you have never thought about this word before, the way we are going to think about it today. The word value is a very powerful word. What makes gold more expensive than stones is because of this one word value. So your value lies in the solutions you provide to the problems facing humanity. Everybody in the world is looking for value, everyone. There is no one who is not after anything of value. So if you can provide something of value, people will definitely find you because they need that which you have. Now, how do you add value to humanity? Very simple, by solving the problems facing humanity. Now the question is, what, what value are you adding to humanity? Because as long as you're not adding any value, and you become a liability. Those who add values to humanity are, are assets and the world protects them because they are very good. So the value you add to the world makes the world better than what it is. And of course, the more value, the more value, the more valuable you are, the more money you make. Why? Because money, money is attracted to value. I don't do gold, gold is more expensive than stone because of each value. What can be done for? Now, when I was in high school, my senior economics teacher one day walked into our class and made a statement that shocked us. He said, a problem is a business. And we were surprised. We were shocked. We couldn't make anything out of the statement. And then he explained to us that a business is born when you discover the solutions to a problem. Then he asks us questions, that what problems are you going to solve in the world? What problems are you going to identify and then provide solutions to? Because in those problems lies your importance to the world. So when you don't embrace a problem, then you are not embracing the opportunities that it brings. Every problem comes with a lot of opportunities. So when you shy away from the problem, then also you are shying away from opportunities at the same time. This is something definitely you want to avoid if you want to uh, leave a lasting legacy in the world by serving humanity. Now, research is a very powerful tool for adding value because in research, we identify problems and then we solve the problems. Now, now here's a very interesting case study. Uh, we are all aware that right now, COVID-19 is ravaging the world, causing people to suffer. But have you ever imagined that this is a big business? 
while, while many people are suffering, many other people are making a lot of money from this pandemic. It's a business. How are they making money? By providing solutions to the problem. What do you think would happen if you found a solution to this pandemic, you found a cure? I believe the whole world will look for you right where you are. Why? We need a solution, we need a cure. And you would make a lot of money because of that cure. So while some, some other people are suffering, there are some people who are making a lot of money, they are thriving actually. And this is something very interesting about a crisis. You know, during crisis, when you provide solutions, you thrive. When you don't have anything to offer to solve the crisis, you suffer. And the best uh, you can do maybe is lamentation. And we are all aware that no one has ever lamented their way to success. It has never happened and it will never happen. So how do you go from local to global? I told you the trick is solving problems, depending on the problems you solve. So where you are with what you have is the starting point of any journey. When you're going anywhere, you normally start the journey right where you are with what you have. So whether you're going global, no matter where you're going, you need to start right where you are with what you have, because that's, that's the starting point of every venture in life. Now, when you solve local problems, you are a local problem solver and you are a local figure. When you solve national problems, you are a national problem solver and of course, a national figure. When you solve global problems, global problems, you are a global problem solver and automatically you become a global figure. You will never go global by solving only local problems and national problems. So to go global, you need to solve uh, uh, global problems. Of course, you, you, you start with uh, local problems right where you are. So then why, why research and why do we need it anyway? And how can you use it to, uh, to become that global figure? Now we are aware that in research, we, we look for problems and then we solve the problems. So that research is very necessary for, for solving the problems facing humanity in all fields. Now, the more problems we have, the more the opportunities for research. <laughs> Now, any research that does not solve a legitimate problem has no value. Such a research does not meet anyone's need. Hence, the researcher makes nothing from it. Now, research is a very interesting venture. You can make a lot of money from research, but it must solve problems. If it, is, if it does not solve any problem, it is not a research. At best, it can be a replica of research. So as researchers, we look at problems as opportunities. Without problems, research would not exist. It would actually, it would have no meaning. The reason why research is what it is, is because of the problem. Now in research, we first understand the problem and then we solve them. Now here's a guy, many of you should be familiar with. Abraham Lincoln, he made a very interesting statement. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe." Now this is a very interesting uh, statement. In research, taking time to understand the problem akin to sharpening the axe. Now to solve a problem, it is very important for you to first identify and understand it because you will never solve any problem which you do not understand. So understanding a problem is, is key for conducting a successful research. Now here's a budding uh, researcher surrounded by a lot of questions. He's trying to solve uh, many problems. Hey, be able to by providing come solutions in. to all these questions. Come in, come in. Researcher, you want to ask yourself the following questions. Please mute your audio. What potential do I have? Sorry, Job. I apologize. Yes. Kindly, if your audio is not muted, please mute it. Thank you. Job, you may proceed. Okay, thanks. Now, uh, as a researcher, 
you need to know your, your capability, your potential. Because there are things you can do and there are things you cannot do. So when you know your potential, you then know uh, the problems you can solve with the potential you have. You also want to know the purpose you are meant to fulfill on earth because it is very important that you know why, why, why you exist. Because uh, when you know why you exist, only then can you live uh, a life of purpose, a meaningful life. You also want to know the areas you are interested in as well as the problems in those areas because it is very easy to solve problems in areas in which you are interested because those areas come naturally to you and uh, you don't need to be pushed to do anything in those areas. You are self-motivated. And of course, you also want to know the solutions uh, to those problems which you can provide. And uh, ultimately, you want to know how you can provide the solutions to those problems. You also want to know uh, the attempts that have been made of the problems. And of course, how successful the attempts were. And you want to know the gaps that exist so that you close the gaps because if there's no gap, then there is no possibility for research. Because in research, we identify gaps and then we close the gaps. You also want to know how better your solutions are compared to those of other people. Now, the reason why people compare products that serve similar functions is because they want the best. Everyone desires the best even when they cannot afford it. I've never met anyone who does not want the best. Everybody wants the best. They may not afford it, yes, but then they want it. No one has, no one has ever ignored the best. So you want to know how better your solutions are compared to those of other people. Because for example, right now, uh, if we come up with the, the solutions, so many people have produced uh, vaccines for COVID-19, but of course people are comparing. Yeah? A lot of comparison is happening because we want the best, people want the best. So if you can provide the best, you will win your competitors. Now talking about the best makes me remember this guy. Amazon was an American lecturer and essayist. He made a statement which I want you to focus on. It can make a difference between uh, you and other people. Perhaps maybe his name is synonymous with a mouse trap. Now here's the statement he made. He said, if a man can write a better book, preach a better sermon, or make a better mouse trap than his neighbors, though he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. What a statement, very powerful. So if you can provide the best solution to any particular problem, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter uh, where you're located, people will look for you. Not because they love you, no, because you have what they need. You have the solutions they need. When you go to uh, a shop, you don't go to a shop because you love uh, the shopkeeper. You go because the shopkeeper has what you want. When you go to say doctor, you don't go to a doctor because you, 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 you love the doctor, no. You go because the doctor can solve your problem. So people go to those who solve their problems. Now, research is a very powerful tool for career mobility. It's one of the most powerful tools you can use to grow in any field. We are all aware that problems exist in all fields. There is no field which does not have uh, problems. So that means there are, there are opportunities for research in, in, in all fields at all levels. And of course, we do conduct research in teams with people from different fields. And for me, I normally prefer uh, the holistic approach to research, which involves uh, all people who will be affected by the research. So when you bring all of them on board, you combine heads, you can then produce the best solutions to the problems at hand. So how does research aid uh, career mobility? I wanna share with you what happened to me just a few, a few years ago. What, what made me what I am today? A research study, as we are aware, impacts people socially, politically, uh, psychologically, economically, and whatever. Therefore, we need 
to involve people from different backgrounds. And of course, the skills, the research skills we have are universal. They can be applied in, in, in any department, in any field, in any part of the world. So if the skills can be applied in any department, in any field, that means within an organization, you can apply the same skills in department, say A, in department B. That will have aided your career mobility. Now, Kampala Capital City Authority is the administrative unit of Kampala City. This is uh, their headquarters. Make sure you visit Kampala. A lot of interesting things happen in Kampala, from politics to uh, culture to uh, all fields, everything. Now, when I was doing my undergraduate studies at Makere University, I had the precious opportunity of undertaking my first internship at KCCA. When I went, we were five mechanical engineering students. And we found there was a problem that they were trying to solve. They'd been trying to solve the problem for two years. They had not found a solution. So the manager of the mechanical workshop put me in charge. He said, we want you to solve this problem. It, it had to do with the traffic lights. They were trying to install new traffic lights in the city, but uh, the system was not working because they had not done uh, the research well. So I used my, my colleagues and we did the research. We went into the lab and uh, conducted experiments on the materials they were using for installing the lights. And we were able to identify the problems that they were using the wrong materials. So when we, when we finished our experiments, we made the recommendations and uh, they changed the materials. So as I speak now, the traffic lights they installed after our research are still standing up to now. Now, what happened then because of that research? It was at that time when the chief engineer was going on leave. So that was when uh, the manager put me in charge. So I became the acting chief engineer for the entire internship period. From, a, from an intern to uh, a chief engineer for that period. So it was very interesting and I really enjoyed it. But what I want you to understand here is that it is because of the research I conducted with my, my colleagues that got me into that position. And of course, even when the chief engineer came back, I was still allowed to continue as a chief engineer because I had become so good in conducting research that they could not ignore me. Even the chief engineer uh, came under my, my control and command. So what I want you to pick from this is that no one will ever ignore you as long as you're good at what you do. The problem is a lot of people do things superficial. That's why uh, they cannot go far. Nobody will ever ignore you as long as you're very good at what you do. No one will ever ignore you. So the more you develop as a researcher, the greater your chances of moving up the ladder. I was able to move from an intern to a chief engineer within just one week of my internship because of my research skills. Now, what am I doing here? What research am I conducting right here? Uh, perhaps all of you have heard uh, the word microchips. Now, this is, this is a very serious word. When you mention this word, uh, the way people look at you, like uh, they look at you like, uh, like a cat, mm -hmm. like a, swallow, uh, a rat. Now, microchip, a microchip is just a tiny piece of material that contains electronic circuits, allowing it to store a lot of information. The size is as small as a grain of rice. If you have ever seen a grain of rice, that's the size of a microchip. This is how uh, microchips look like. These are just examples. Now, your phone, your phone works because of the microchips. Your computers work because of the microchips. You are able to connect to internet because of microchips. Microchips are used in so many devices, in GPS tracking systems, in televisions, in identity cards. There's so many, so many uh, functions, so many applications. Now, this is what I'm, what I'm working on here. I want to, uh, I want to, to, to design 
and then produce microchips that can be used in, in computers and, and phones and ATMs. Now, the chips I am working on will be very different from uh, the chips that already exist. We have done the feasibility studies, uh, the, the technicality of the project, we have done everything needed. So this is what, I'm, this is what I am working on at, at, at the moment. Now, microchips belong to uh, what we call microelectronic systems. Uh, a technology for producing these tiny devices. I am also working on uh, microfluidics devices. Now this term, this term is big but very simple. A microfluidic device is just a device that, that, that allows a tiny amount of liquid to flow through to be analyzed. Now, if you have ever gone to hospital, then, then you notice that when your blood samples were taken, they were injected into uh, this PCR testing device. Now, this is what I'm making. So my work is to, uh, to design and produce the micro channels where, where, where the blood can flow through. That's what I'm doing. It's a very serious research, very serious. And then also uh, microfluid devices are also used in telecommunication, engineering, medical application. Now, the figure at the top right corner, this is, this is breast cancer diagnosis. Now the device used for uh, breast cancer diagnosis is a microfluidic device, which is, which is also what I'm making. Yeah, now this is, this is, this is bone cementing. Somebody broke their, uh, their bones and uh, the, white, the white substance you are seeing inside are the microfluidics devices, which are used for, uh, for cementing broken bones. So these are also the things I'm working on. Now, these are the, the top 30 companies in the world in microelectromechanical systems. I wanna ask you a, a simple question. How many of these companies do you think mm, are in Africa? How many are in Kenya? How many are in Ghana, Uganda? The answer will shock you, zero. None of them is in Africa. 17 of them are in the US. That's about 56.67%. Eight of them are in Japan. That's 26.67%. Three are in Germany. Two in France. And only one in Italy. Even the one in Italy is the branch of the one in France. So it is still one company. Now, why don't we have any of these companies in Africa? What are we really doing as Africans? This is, this is, this is the projected revenue market for microelectromechanical systems. I told you microelectromechanical systems is a technology for manufacturing devices like microchips and uh, the microfluidics devices I, I showed you in the previous slides. Now, it is projected that this year by 2021, the revenue will be over 60 billion US dollars. Over 60 billion US dollars. Now, if none of the top 30 companies is in Africa, that means we are, we are missing a significant percentage of uh, this revenue. It's very unfortunate. So when I came here, I met this gentleman, Professor Hamid uh, Elbab, who is my supervisor. Is the one who motivated me uh, to conduct my research in microchips and microfluidics devices. The first time I met him, when I was trying to, uh, to motivate me, he told me uh, that no country in Africa is really focused on, on studying and researching into making microchips. Then I asked him, what, what is really wrong with Africa? What's, what's the problem? Then he, he told me three problems. The first one, he said Africans are more of consumers than producers. That we love consuming. We are proud, we are proud consumers, but we don't want to produce. The second problem, he said, he said Africans are not investing time in innovative and creative thinking. We are not thinking to create new things. 
we are busy enjoying products of other people, but we are not, we are not really thinking to produce uh, new things. Then the last one, he said, Africa is what it is because of leadership crisis. Now this one needs no, no explanation. We all know that where leadership is lacking, we cannot register any serious progress, any serious growth. Now, at the end of our discussion, he made a sad statement that shocked me. He said, countries with microfabrication are the richest, while those without it are the poorest. Micromachining is a very virgin field. If we don't venture into it, then we will forever remain followers as Africans. This is a sad statement, very sad. The key word in the statement is the word forever. If you don't venture into making these micro devices like microchips, because the people who make them make a lot of money. The reason why America is what it is, is because of micro technology, what they're doing. So that while we are busy waiting for coffee from, uh, from the Guardian, Japan is making computers, making microchips. America is making uh, microchips and they are selling and they are, they are getting rich while we are still waiting for tea, for sugar cane. It's unfortunate. I therefore ask you guys the following five questions. When shall we ever get tired of being only consumers but never producers of MEMS products as Africans? Shall we ever fully tap into the enormous potential of MEMS? We saw the revenue market over 60 billion US dollars by 2021, as we talk now. But over 30% of that is not coming into Africa because none of the top 30 companies in the world, MEMS, is in Africa. Shall we ever fully mine the youth wealth of MEMS? Think about it. When shall we define the place we want to occupy in the realm of wealth? of MEMS. And finally, shall we ever rise and occupy that place? So think about it. As young Africans, we have a, a big role to play so that we can venture into this virgin field and we develop the continent. So here's your, your takeaway from this session. I want you to take time and think about this, uh, these points. Take your time, analyze yourself, and think about this statement. Your first takeaway is this, your relevance to humanity depends on the problems you solve. The more problems you solve, the more relevant you are to humanity. So take time, think about yourself, analyze yourself. What problems do you think uh, you can solve for humanity? Because like I said before, your relevance lies in the problems you solve. So if you are not solving any problem, then you are, then, to many other people in the world, you're not relevant. They will not look for you because you have nothing to offer. And then while you're busy lamenting about a problem, some people are busy looking for the solutions. The next day you pay them for the solution. It's a very serious statement, think about it. So while, while some people can be, can be crying lamenting about a problem, and this, and this I think many, many Africans are very good at, they cry while waiting for the solutions to come from, uh, from the outside continent. So while we are busy crying, lamenting, people are busy making money, the next, the next day we wake up and we pay them for the solutions they provide while we are crying, very unfortunate. Now, any research that does not solve a legitimate problem has no value. Such a research does not meet anyone's need, hence the researcher makes Recording. nothing from it. We, and I want you to know that research is one of the most powerful tools for career mobility. And uh, finally, the more you develop as a researcher, the greater your chances of moving up the ladder. We saw how research aids career mobility, how you can switch from, uh, from one level to another, from one department to another because of your research skills. Very interesting. So I want you to take your time and think about what, what, what you are really going to do for humanity. Otherwise, your relevance is questionable. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. That was such a powerful presentation. And yes, please leave that last slide so we can follow you on the socials. I think that's how I first met you. Isn't it amazing that we can all meet in this online space 
despite you know our different corners in the world uh, please leave that last slide um, for us job so that we can take down your contacts facebook i see you have that you have um, linkedin presence all the different social media handles and your email address is also there you have a youtube channel called job lazarus inspiration and i am truly inspired i must say I am quite moved by your uh, personal and professional experience. And I see that we now have a couple of questions. Members, please uh, type your questions in the chat and also feel free to raise your hand. So far, Lucille has raised their hand. I'm checking to see if there's anybody else whose hand is raised. If you'd like to speak, you just raise your virtual hand so that I can see you and I'll call on you. So let us begin with Lucille. Welcome, Lucille. You may please unmute. All right. Um, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I want to say I'm so blessed for today's um, session. Job Lazarus, thank you so much for your today's um, inspiration. Um, I just want to say something when it comes to problem solution. Um, some, some time back, I, I watched a movie of a young local boy who had uh, a big problem in his village. Um, he's, uh, he's from Malawi and they always had like dry season for a full year and rainy season again another year like that like that so people were suffering and no one could even think of a solution so this guy invented a windmill that would provide water during dry season but then after this invention he became a problem solver because after inventing uh, the windmill using a bicycle and these uh they are called bamboo trees, something of that. The title of the movie is The Boy Who Harnessed Through the Winds. It's a, it's a movie based on a true story. But you realize that after this young boy inventing this, he's actually taken away from his country and like taken away from his country, of course, the white man's country. So you realize, okay, besides his example, we have also had a uh, the Ugandan scenario, the guy who invented uh, the COVID, it's Professor Ogwang. Actually, the government is just protecting him. And in case of anything, we shall see him flying to the outside world. So as uh, Africa and so many examples, you realize that these great, great minds are always taken away. These great, great minds are always taken away. As Africa, how do we... What can we do to, to make this solution, um, solution providers stay in our country? Because we have seen so many scenarios where someone discovers something and they are taken away. And the next thing you hear, this person is not coming back. So I think that's what I have to say with a question. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. All right, uh, Job, you Thanks. may respond to that. Meanwhile, if you... Anybody else also has a question or a comment, please feel free to type in the chat. I see many more comments coming in. Job, would you like to respond to Lucille now? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Well, thanks a lot for that wonderful question. Uh, she made a very interesting uh, point. A very interesting point. Take you back to, to what my professor said. He identified three problems. The number one reason why people people are leaving are leaving Africa to go out is because of the leadership we have. Because because of the, the leadership crisis, if we cannot we cannot provide a conducive environment for, for our citizens, they will be attracted by what they think is more conducive than their countries. It's very simple. And then also some people, not everybody who goes out of of their country. Is affected by this. Some some people go out because when your dream becomes bigger than your environment, sometimes you need to leave that environment. For example, my case, the course the course I'm studying now is not offered in Uganda, it's not offered in East Africa. 
So for me, my dream had become bigger than my country for that particular moment. So I, I had to leave the country to come and study this course. But of course, a lot of people leave their countries because of because the environment is not conducive. So they are forced to run away. Now, what do we do? We we need to fix we need to fix uh, leadership in our countries so that we can keep our we can we we can keep the people in our countries. Now, another problem is take my example with the course I'm studying. There is nothing I can do in Uganda on my own. I am studying uh, how to make microchips. I've made some few and we are testing them, they are working. But now if I return to Uganda right now, what can I do? Nothing. So leadership is very important. So if I return to Uganda, there is, there is, there is a possibility of, uh, of uh, myself going to another country. As long as there is no environment for me to practice what I've, I've studied here. Honestly, and I cannot provide that environment myself. I cannot. I have big plans of setting up uh, a company in, in Uganda for, for manufacturing microchips, but I cannot do that on my own unless supported by the government. Leadership is, is the solution to every problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? I see quite a number of comments in the chat, and so I'll just take a few there. Um, Jackie Oloya says, Job, that was a powerful presentation. Thank you so much. You are such an amazing and inspirational person. Then Anjiko says, Thank you for such a lovely presentation, enlightening as well. Billy William Onen says, Great presentation, bro. <laughs> Stephen Olubuliera says, thank you for your presentation, Lazarus, an inspiration and a real eye opener. Nyeko Samuel says, great venture, L. Lazarus, uh, the future is brighter, bro. <laughs> Paul Opira says, it's a challenging session. I appreciate. So Paul feels positively challenged. That's amazing. Chiesa Angela. Awesome presentation. Thank you so much, Job. Kankara David, uh, sorry if I butcher your name, uh, the pronunciation. He says, thank you, Job Okello, for a wonderful presentation. You have woken me up today for a tangible project that I was working on. God bless you, brother. Wow, that's amazing, David. And I'm glad that many of you are inspired. I see more comments coming in fast and furious. Amito Barbara says, thanks so much, Job, for the wonderful presentation. It's an eye opener. Kiza Okello James says, what a trailblazer. And I agree, actually, you are a trailblazer. And uh, research offers the opportunity for every one of us to be a thought leader. So let us all be positively challenged to begin what you know others are not doing to you know introduce you look in your setting in your context and you can actually raise a solution to a problem around you uba says thank you amazing presentation jackie or lawyer i have just seen plo lumumba is that the real plo glad you took time to listen to our young inspirational speaker i don't know what you mean by the real one but i i get i get the the flow it's <laughs> on the call. It's on the call. Yeah. We have Professor on the call. Oh, amazing. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor PLO Lumumba, for being here. This is a real honor for Journal Club. I have been to a lot of Prof Lumumba's talks, and I would like him to say something, if that's OK with you, Prof. Obina Alfred, thanks so much, Job. God bless you in your journey. I'm proud of you. Norbert Onen, too, says, good presentation, Mr. Job, Microsoft. Chip research is a way to go. Winifred Akan says, thanks, Job, for the impressive presentation. Emmanuel, wow, you are great. I am inspired. Dickens GR, Gina Call says, thanks for the head up. Lazarus, I mean, there's so many texts coming in, and most of them actually are just about, thank you, thank you, this is amazing. And uh, <laughs> Lucille is agreeing with me that Professor Lumumba, could say hi to us. So Prof, kindly unmute yourself and kindly say hello to us. We are honored by your presence today. Prof.
Prof Lumumba, are you here? I see that your audio icon is inactive, so kindly check your audio settings. I can see you on the call, but I'm not sure if you're able to be heard by everyone. So kindly check your audio settings and we'll be happy to hear from you, Prof Lumumba, as soon as you can fix the audio. And Emmanuel is agreeing, Prof should talk. Dieng Dakchul says, let Prof say something. <laughs> so Prof will be honored if you say it hello. Ayela Jimmy says, thank you so much for rekindling my light towards lucrative, innovative thinking. Yeah, so P, Prof PLO might be having audio challenges, but we will be, we are here till the top of the hour. So uh, we will be happy to hear from Prof. Paul gives quite a long comment here, and uh, I like your comment, Paul. When you talk about research, it's a problem solver in intent. But you find that in most cases, once research will require accreditation, when you have books at hand, most cases, master's degree and above, young people without this education level are not encouraged. This should be looked into. Once it's done, people will look and brainstorm for these challenges around. Why would someone invent something after all those books, not at an early age? This is a really interesting point by Paul Pabuenje about the perception that research is only for postgraduates and that, uh, and that instead of thinking that anybody could literally jump on the innovation table, so to speak, and produce a worthwhile research. So, um, Job Lazarus, Okello, what do you think about this comment uh, coming from Paul? It's a very powerful comment. Um, I'm actually really touched a lot by it because uh, many of our, our young people are not given the opportunity to, to conduct research. And yet they could they could do they could they could produce uh, groundbreaking works which could revolutionize the world. Now this is this is happening mainly in Africa, but there are other universities, many universities in 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 in, in other continents uh, where research is part of uh, even undergraduate programs. It's only a problem here now. For for me, I'm working with a number of uh, researchers who are actually undergraduate students. Some of them are in Germany, some of them are in Japan. I'm working with them on this same project we are, we are working on. So the problem mainly in Africa. So what, what we need to do, our universities need to incorporate research at every level of university education. Because that, that young boy uh, who is not facilitated can produce research, uh, can produce, uh, can, can do wonders that can, that, that can really change the world. So thank you so much for that wonderful uh, yeah, thank you so much for that response. So do we have any other comments as we get to the top of the hour? I'll take only one more share. So please raise your hand if you'd like to say something and uh, then we will be wrapping up for today. All right. There are still many more comments. Um, Stephen says, hey, still reminiscing on the comments from the professor from Egypt. <laughs> How will we be able to solve the three problems we are currently experiencing in Africa? We are all in this together. And then Ayala Jimmy says, my brother Job, I need your help. So um, I think you already shared your contacts for anybody who would like to continue. I followed your Facebook posts and they are quite inspiring. And Ayala Jimmy would like your help to carry out some research. So maybe just take this last one about how to resolve the three problems and then uh, we can wrap up. Thank you. Now the first problem where Africans, Africans are uh, more of consumers than producers. This is this is this is very simple to uh, to solve because we we are more of consumers because of actually our 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 minds, the mindset we have. No transformation can ever can ever take place in any setting without the transformation in the mind. 
as a psychologist, you know that, <laughs> Joyce. Now, um, to solve this problem, we need to start thinking, thinking, thinking to create solutions to problems instead of waiting, consuming thoughts of other people. Because at the moment, whenever a problem hits, 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 hits humanity, Africans are quick to wait for, for solutions from other people. We don't want to produce our own solutions. That's why uh, Professor Lumumba always talks of African solutions, African problems. So this is, this is our time now to, to solve our problems. But we will never solve the problems if we don't think. Thinking is a very precious uh, venture, which we need to really uh, venture into. And then the leadership crisis. This is this is this is this is uh, the biggest problem facing Africa, the leadership crisis. Because in Africa we have politicians, we 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 have very few leaders, but many politicians. Most of the people we elect are actually politicians, and we know politics we never solve any problem, but leadership will solve problems. Politics create problems, leadership solve the problems. So we need more leaders than politicians, and the leaders are we. We are the leaders. Do not just focus on the elected people. I am, I am leading in this field of research into microchips here with my professor and, uh, and the team. We, are lead, we don't need to be elected in order to do wonders for humanity. You were born to lead. So when you discover that potential you have and the purpose you are meant to fulfill on earth, you become a leader in that particular area. So do not wait for, for, for the government to change, to start doing something for the people. Rise and do wonders for humanity. Thank you so much. All right, I am seeing two hands and I like to request you to please keep your comments or questions really short because our time is almost up. And let us begin with um, Anyama Samuel and then Kiza Okello James. Anyama, kindly unmute your audio and ask your question or give your comment. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm really impressed by the work of our brother, but I still have to ask him one more one question. How do we how do we link the gap between parents and uh, children to unlock the potentials they have in them? Because most in most cases, our parents, the people around us, are the people who block us from uh, unlocking our potentials. How do we help that job? Well, that's a powerful question. I love that question. No, oh, sorry. I think in the interest of time, we can also take this, the last two, and that's it. I close it. Okay. <laughs> so let's do Kiza, Okello, James, and then Ayela, Jimmy, and that's it. Uh, please make your questions 30 seconds. Welcome. Kiza? Okay, I'm not sure if Kiza can hear us. Let's go to Ayela. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, my brother Job, for the work well done, uh, sharing us uh, more hints on how to go about research. Uh, basically, I'm um, here with my brother, Amy, Ayela Jim, I'm quite sure, uh, Ayela Amy, I'm quite sure you know him pretty well. He's doing some research at Gulli University on some topic which he will well explain to you and actually needs your help so that you can maybe uh, connect with him in the later days uh, so that you can really help him out. And uh, pers me personally, I didn't get you quite well on the, the, the third reason as to why you said uh, your professor told you that Africa cannot really um, invest in microchips. They cannot produce microchips. The third reason, one, you, told, you, told, you made mention that Africans are more of consumers than producers. Then secondly, they lack critical and innovative thinking. The third one, actually, I, I missed it due to the environmental barrier. So please, if you can help me with that, I'll be so great. Thank you. All right, so I think you can respond to those two as we finish. Thank you. Okay, let me, let me start with the last one. Thank you, Jimmy, for, for your question. Now, I said, my professor said, the first problem is Africans are more of consumers than producers. The second one, uh, Africans are not investing time in creative thinking and innovative thinking. 
thinking to solve problems, thinking to create something new. And then the last one is leadership crisis in Africa. This one needs no explanation. We are all aware of what's happening in our continent, the leadership crisis in different countries in the, in the continent. Then getting back to the question of uh, Okelo, it talked about uh, how, parents, how parents can help unlock the potential of uh, their children. And you know, the biggest problem facing the world is actually ignorance. If you do your research on any problem, you find that at, at the root of it is ignorance. So the problem with parenting nowadays is that a lot of parents are really ignorant about parenting. So the solution to ignorance is knowledge. So the parents have to seek knowledge on how they can unlock the potential. Now, when they, when they seek the knowledge, they have to apply the knowledge correctly, you understand? And so uh, when, when we do that, we shall be able to help our children unlock their potential. And then also some, some, some parents, still out of ignorance, fight, uh, fight their own children's uh, potential. When a child starts, starts doing something, which is maybe not in line with what the parents want the child to do, they start uh, fighting that. They don't want the child to do that. That's unfortunate. We know kids who, who make toys of cars, buses, those could be the greatest inventors of all time, if given a chance, if, if nurtured properly. So as a parent, it is important for you to identify the interests of your child as well as possible, and then nurture the child in that line. When you identify that your child is interested in this area because the child may go to school and not actually perform well in certain areas, but everybody is interested in some area. There's no one who is not interested in any area. So when you identify the area of your child, you can then help the child to go in that area. That's where you will help the child to fully blossom by unlocking their potential. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Um, at this time, I would like to really thank our presenter, Job Lazarus Okello. And for this lively audience, you participated very well. We had over 55 people live on Zoom, and this recording and the slides will be available. Some of you are asking how to join Journal Club. Please fill in the feedback form. We really value your feedback. The link is shared in the Zoom chat, and we will be Having many more such sessions, we host research mentorship sessions like this for any of our members who would like to tell us anything on any research topic that is of interest. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here this evening. It was amazing. And thank you for all your comments and questions. And let's keep in touch. We have a number of events coming up in the journal club and we will be sharing the list of all the events coming up uh, and it is amazing that each one of us has something to contribute as job has challenged us so we'll be wanting to see many more members showing up to give talks like this and to collaborate to introduce such kind of leadership this is what we are all about we are all about research leadership all right thank you so much everyone and have a wonderful evening from Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything to say as we Goodbye, finish? Everyone. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Have a nice one. Bye, See you. Thank <laughs> you.